The awkward stage of growing out your hair sucks. As you can see, I am currently in the awkward stage of growing out my hair. And to be honest, this actually is not the first time that I've attempted to grow my hair out. But every time I tried to grow out my hair previously, I would end up letting the awkward stage get the best of me and I'd cut it all off. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the five things that I have been doing to help get me through the awkward stage of growing out my hair. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Joshua. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna show you guys the five things that I'm doing to help get me through the awkward stage of growing out my hair. Because as you saw, I've tried many times in the past, but I always, always let the awkward stage get the best of me. And I've, I don't think I've ever reached past seven months of growing out my hair previously because I always hit this stage where it gets kind of just, it's weird, like it, it doesn't really hang down well, the back wings out and it just, I usually don't like it and I end up caring way too much about it and cutting it all off and going for a short fade like I had when I first started growing out my hair. So the first thing I've been doing of these five things is wearing hats. Now hats are literally perfect because you can throw a hat on, tuck your hair behind your ears, and you're good to go. You don't really have to worry about what your hair looks like, how it's styling, does it look different from day to day, a hat covers it all, and it can go with pretty much any outfit that you're doing. So you can wear it forward, you can wear it backward, you can make it fit pretty much into anything that you're wearing. I've been wearing hats for probably 90% of my hair growing out process. And the only thing I'd have to say I don't like about hats is they don't fit for every occasion. So like uh, I can't wear a hat at work and I can't like formal events like a wedding or if you were going to like a funeral or just like a nice formal event where you're doing like a nice dinner. Hats don't really fit into that criteria. They look weird, especially if you're dressed up and then you're wearing like a ball cap. It doesn't really fit. So that's probably the only con with hats is not everyone can just wear a hat straight for like six to 12 months to hide their hair. And there's going to be situations that you're left not being able to wear a hat. Which leads me to the second thing I've been doing to help with growing out my hair in the awkward stage, and that is wearing headbands. So I usually wear headbands primarily for the gym. It really helps keep the hair out of my face and just keeps the hair like controlled. And so I'm not really worrying about that. Like when you're running, especially where it's at, like I can't obviously tie it up. And as you see, like if I were to run and this gets in my face, it's like in my eyes and it's just annoying. So I've been using headbands. You can also wear headbands out if you want to, if you don't really wanna rock a hat, particularly one night, you could wear a headband instead. There's all different styles of headbands. Headbands can also fit into more of that formal, depending on what kind of headband you wear. So maybe a wedding, maybe at work, maybe if in a more dressed up situation, depending on the headband you wear you might be able to get away with it, you might not. Once again, it's another one of those things that I love headbands, especially like I said, for the gym and some more formal informal events, but they don't cover everything. And so you're gonna find situations where you still really can't rock a headband. And yeah, so that's the only thing probably negative I would say about headbands is they just, they don't fit into every situation but it's definitely been a go-to aside from wearing hats for me is to just rock a headband. And if you're wondering where you could find good headbands, hair ties if your hair's a little longer, hats or beanies, the long hairs are definitely the first place you should check when shopping for headbands, hats, beanies, or hair ties. They literally have you covered from day one of hair growth till your hair is touching the floor. I recently purchased this headband here. It's called the Ninja Gaiden by the long hairs. Um, like I said, I love rocking the headbands because one, this is a thicker headband to wear for the gym. And then I'll wear it out and about every once in a while um, on occasion. This isn't sponsored by the long hairs. I just really like their community they've created for people looking to grow their hair out. And then also the way they give back in charitable contributions. So 
with the long hairs, everything you purchase, so like this headband here, they donate a dollar to children with hair loss. And they also just recently, last year, so 2019, they did an event called The Great Cut, where they had like roughly 2,500 people set the Guinness World Record for how much hair they actually donated to children with hair loss or just charity in general. And so if you're gonna buy a headband, hat, or beanie, hair tie, check them out first. I'll leave a link down in the description to check them out. And like I said, it's not sponsored. I just really like what this company's doing and what they're doing for children who can't grow hair themselves. So back to the tips. Number three is find photos for inspiration. So when you're first growing out your hair, I know there's usually that moment, like I don't know if this is just me, but there's like that moment that you see someone like on TV or in a movie or just out and about in your day and you see a guy with long hair and you're just like, man, I want that, that looks so good. For me, that was, at least in this recent one, that was Jason Momoa. When I saw Aquaman and I just saw like his hair with the kind of like ombre color going on, it was like, man, I would love to like one day rock long hair. And at the time I had a really short fade. I didn't really plan on growing my hair out from that point. Like it, it, I hit about three and a half months of not getting a haircut. And I came to this kind of like, should I cut it, should I not? And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try growing it out again. And this time see if I can be successful, get to that Jason Momoa stage. But use photos for inspiration or find guys that have long hair that you aspire to have your hair like. And then just kind of like, I follow him on Instagram. Um, I follow some other people on Instagram. Another big inspiration for me, one of the like OGs of making long hair and the man bun popular in this modern day and age is Brock O'Hearn. I follow him. I follow Thomas in Action, who's a cool YouTuber who does a lot of hair tutorials and has been growing his hair out for a while. Um, like I said, the long hairs, they have YouTube, Instagram, and some other things. So I follow some people that really inspire me when I look at their hair and I say like, that's what I want. And it helps me to realize that they too, at one point, we're in the stage that I'm in with the awkward stage and now they have hair that looks absolutely badass. So it's just like, I gotta push through. If I want my hair to eventually look like that, everyone has to go through the rite of passage of the awkward stage, but eventually I will have hair that looks somewhat similar to that. And so having that inspiration and photos to really look at can help inspire you when you're really feeling just kind of down in the dumps about your hair or it's just not working for you and you can't wear a hat or do headbands or anything like that to really hide the awkward stage and just not liking your hair at all. All right, and the fourth thing I've been doing, which is something I did not do previously with my hair growth is setting a goal. So this time around, I've set a goal of where I wanna get my hair growth to. Right now, I actually have a goal of 12 months without getting a haircut. Like I said, I'm really not liking how this back is winging out and I'm really fighting the urge to not go and get a trim and get some of this cleaned up and like the sideburns cleaned up. I wanna do 12 months without a single haircut or trim. And then I have some other goals from there, like reaching 15 or 18 months with hair growth in general. But setting a goal really helps you to tough it out when things just really suck, your hair is not cooperating, you feel like garbage, and you just wanna cut it all off like I did previously, that goal really helps you to say like, no, I gotta get to 12 months, like that's the goal I set. And if you really need help with setting that goal as well, tell somebody about it, tell like a few friends so that you have people kind of holding you accountable. So if you mention like, I think I'm gonna get my hair cut, they'll be like, whoa, wait, I thought you said you were going to 12 months. So finding people who can help keep you accountable might help with your goal as well, but setting a goal really kind of puts it in the back of your mind like it has for me to say like, man, I, I really actually don't like what's going on back here, to be honest, but I have that goal of 12 months without a trim. So on the days that I'm really like, ah, I should just, I should schedule something. Like I remind myself, no, I've set a goal. I need to just stick with it. And eventually this phase will pass and I'll be out of the awkward stage. And then I'll be happy I stuck with my goal this time around. And the last tip that I have for anyone dealing with the awkward stage or trying to get through the awkward stage is just stop caring. So with all of those previous attempts at growing out my hair, like I showed in the beginning and I've kind of talked throughout, 
I wore hats, I wore headbands, like I kind of did the whole thing. I didn't really do the photos for inspiration or setting a goal. So those are newer things that I'm trying this time around. But the biggest thing and probably the only tip that really matters when it comes to getting through the awkward stage is to just stop caring. In all of those previous hair growths, I always cared way too much about what other people thought how my hair looked day in and day out. One day it would look great, and then for like three or four days straight, it would just look like trash, and I would end up caring way too much about what other people thought, and about the fact that like I can't really wear a hat to work, and I can't wear a headband in every situation, and like I said, I didn't have a goal in place, so I would just let that idea of like caring way too much about my hair really affect my decision to finally get it cut off, and to be honest, in all of those previous attempts, like at first it was like, yeah, that was cool. Like, I'm so happy I got a cut. I feel so much better. Like, oh, I got short hair. It's easy to maintain. But within like a week or two, I would typically regret having quit on growing out my hair because it's like, ah, if I would have just kept at it, maybe I would now be way down the road and I'd be super happy with it. And then, like I said, you'd usually see someone like, Chris Hemsworth and Thor or whatever. I know that's a wig, but like you'd see him with long hair and you'd be like, man, I really want long hair. Like I'll try growing it out again. And then it's like a, this vicious cycle of growing it out and then caring too much about it looking bad. So then you cut it and then you have to start back from zero, but then you're back in the awkward stage and then you're like cutting it again. And it's like, you're always stuck in this weird limbo of the awkward stage. And if you just stop caring, you won't have to worry at all. And that really is probably the biggest difference this time around with me growing my hair out is I really just do not care what it looks like. Like if it looks bad, like I'll deal with it because tomorrow is a new day. It might look better tomorrow and eventually I'll be out of the awkward stage and then I won't have to worry at all. It's just, it's one of those things. If you want to have long hair, this is something you're going to have to go through. And the less you care about it, the better off you'll be in the long run. So there you guys have it. Those are the five things I am currently doing to help get me through the awkward stage of growing out my hair. If you guys like this video, show it some love by hitting the like button. Leave a comment if there's a tip that you have used or are using while going through the awkward stage. And as always, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get updates on when I'm uploading my next video. Thanks for watching.